you say, I command my mind to bless the Lord. I command my mind to bless the Lord. to be back with you today. This is our um, middle school and our high school class. So if that's you, I'm glad that you're here. Um, as you can see, I'm in the Christmas spirit. Got my Santa hat on. So I'm glad to be here with you guys today. We're just about 12 or so days away from Christmas. So I hope you guys are excited. I know I am. And I'm excited to get into this lesson today. So let's go ahead and start out with a word of prayer. Dear God, we praise you. We thank you. We honor you because you are Lord of all. God, we thank you for being here with us today. We thank you for giving us breath in our bodies. And we thank you for this lesson that we're about to dive into today, today God. We ask that it would change us, God, that it would make us better people, God, and that we'll just want to do better going forward, God. We thank you for each and every person who's watching this video, no matter when they are watching it, God. I ask for a special blessing over their lives and over the lives of their families. God, as we approach this holiday season, I pray that um, each and every person feels your love, that they feel your spirit, God, and that they have a reason to celebrate our Savior, Jesus Christ. So we give your name the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen for you guys. All right. So today's lesson um, is kind of similar to where we were uh, last week. 
So if you recall, last week we started out, we were talking about Christmas, right? So just a few reminders, just like I said last week, so we know that um, Jesus was not born on December 25th necessarily, but it is the day that we celebrate uh, Jesus's birth. So that's the day that we celebrate his birthday. Um, and, and in different places in the Bible that it did already prophesy about a savior who would come and that's Jesus. So we know that as well. And the other thing is that for some Christmas isn't the most wonderful time of the year. Uh, but the birth of Jesus gives us all something that we can celebrate. And that's really, really exciting. That's always something to look forward to, not just at Christmas time, but all year. So um, if you recall, our scripture um, has been on Matthew chapter two, but it's been verses one through 12. But we're specifically looking at verses nine through 12. So I'm going to read that again for you again this week. So verse nine says, after listening to the king, they went on their way and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Verse 11 says, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to King Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. All right, so these uh, four verses are specifically talking about the wise men or the Magi um, who came to visit Jesus after he was born um, in Bethlehem. So that's what we're talking about and that's what we're gonna be discussing. Um, that's what we discussed last week. That's what we're gonna be discussing this week. And that's what you'll probably hear about next week too as we approach Christmas Day. So um, like we just read in our uh, verses, the treasures or the gifts uh, that the wise men brought to Jesus included gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So today we're going to focus a bit on the frankincense. So it's basically like an incense. So frankincense was often uh, burned as an incense. Um, the word for frankincense in Hebrew language was taken from the word that means white, the color white. And it's also mentioned a few other times in the Bible. In Exodus, Leviticus, uh, Jeremiah, and Malachi, feel free to hit pause on this video and go ahead and take a look at those, at those scriptures so you can see where else it was referenced in the Bible. It was also um, commonly used in tabernacle and temple worship. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. And it was used in the Old Testament during worship and in the New Testament, which also mentions the same uh, worship style as well that took place in the Old Testament. So um, that's basically some, some information about frankincense um, so that you have it going forward. So what we know is that um, when we're talking about the uh, Old Testament style of worship is that priests would enter the temple of the Lord and they would burn incense while people would gather outside of the temple um, and they would pray. They would gather outside the temple or the tabernacle and they would pray. And so the uh, incense that were burning were creating an atmosphere um, for the people to come and pray so that they're um, they would, it would create that, that moment for them, right? And this was a regular ritual. So the question becomes, why would the wise men or the Magi give Mary and Joseph frankincense, right? So based off what we know about the incense, um, they offered it to them as an act of worship to Jesus because they believed in Jesus and they knew God sent him here to be our savior. Um, and so them presenting these incense to him, to Jesus and to his parents, Mary and Joseph was an act of worship. And we've talked about worship before. We talked about um, the different things that we can do to offer worship to God. But we're just gonna dig a little, little tiny bit deeper into that um, today. So what I wanna do right now is share a short video with you. Um, so go ahead and grab a um, piece of paper or a pen if you want, if you wanna write some of this down that you see. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and share this video with you in just a second. Worship is one of those things that has been relegated to a song, but it's much more than, much more than a song. And, and today we're gonna just keep going on that same track and, and, and move down the road on what worship is. And I want you to write down this definition 
of worship because I want you to have the wisdom to do it. Okay. Worship is our love expressed. Everybody say love expressed. Love expressed. Say it like you mean it. Say love expressed. love expressed. Worship is our love expressed to God as a response to his grace towards us. Worship we starts with love. So, so, but, but I can't worship God without love. So God replace my heart. Give me a new heart searching me. And, and y'all something shifted in our church last week. But now that we have love for God, we have to express it. All right. So hopefully you enjoyed that short clip. Um, it's from pastor Michael Todd and he's the pastor of transformation church in, um, Oklahoma city. And so what he mentioned is our love expressed to God as a response to his grace towards us, that, towards us. That's worship. That's his definition of worship. Our love expressed to God as a response to his grace towards us, right? So I love that definition because worship, and he says this in a different part of the sermon, but worship is the only thing that we can offer to God, right? Because anything else we, you know, he doesn't need, even if as we give our money, it's as an act um, of obedience, but it's as a resource, you know, to the church or to the local body. Um, but worship, um, showing our love to God um, and expressing our love to him is what we can give him. And it's just for him. And it has nothing to do with us. So we've talked about this before, ways that we can show love to others, but also how we can show worship to God. Um, serving and giving your time is an act of worship, showing love, helping others, uh, living a life of obedience and honoring God and showing him your love. That's what it means to worship. So what we know is that worship doesn't start and end with music. And it's not and it's not going to. It's so much more than that. Um, worship means giving of yourself selflessly, right? Releasing all selfishness from it and giving of yourself and, and giving to others what you can't receive in return. Also, giving to God his honor and, and what he's due. If we express that we love God and if we express that um, he's done amazing things for us, the least that we can do is show him how much we appreciate him. And that's of offering worship to him. Um, doing for others is showing the love of God to other people. And that in turn is worshiping God, right? Because that's showing others the love of Christ and that's bringing them closer to him. And God loves when his children are able to come back closer to him. And that's exactly what he wants from us. And that's how you can show God in your worship um, through serving and through giving your time and showing love to other people. Um, even in, in your acts and ministry, that's an act of worship, whatever it is that God has placed in your heart that you should be doing. And even if you don't know quite what that is yet, I believe that finding your purpose in Christ always starts with serving other people. As you give of your time um, and you give things to others, as you, as you give acts of charity, as you um, sow love to others, God will be in, begin to reveal to you what your purpose is in the kingdom of God. And so that's the long and short of it today. Um, the wise men offered frankincense to God because they wanted to, to Jesus, because they wanted to, to, to worship him. Um, they wanted to show their love and appreciation for the, for the savior, even, even as he was a baby. Um, they wanted to show that they believed, they believed in who he was and that they believed that he came to save them. And so that's such a, a beautiful gift that they were able to give to him. And I hope that you were able to see that today. So that's the end of our lesson, short and sweet for you guys today. I probably won't see you before Christmas or the new year. So just in case I don't, I just wanted to say Merry Christmas to all of you. And I'll probably see you in 2021. Um, I'm praying that you have a beautiful Christmas with your friends and with your family, hopefully just via Zoom as we're all trying to stay safe during this time. Um, but please know that I love you, that I'm thinking of you, and um, I can't wait to see you guys again. I hope you have a great week and um, I'll see you later. Bye.